welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, all the fun of the fair. We're at the biggest European gun trade show in Nuremberg. First, slap, bang, twang. We're off with YouTube's top catapulting star, Yo Strava. With 116,000 subscribers and 28 million video views, Jörg Sprava is top of the rubber tree when it comes to YouTube. This mild-mannered man mountain has catapulted slingshots into a new age, making the most extraordinary contraptions, all designed to hurl hard and sharp stuff at targets with varying degrees of accuracy. I love fairy tales. He has even caught the eye of Hollywood babies, producers. Violence. He was asked to help the online PR campaign to launch the new Hansel and Gretel movie, The Brief, to come up with a device to kill witches. And here it is. So Jörg is going to, um, well, not cut up meat with this, he's going to shoot it from a catapult that he's designed especially for it. So I hope that the rubber of this thing is still good enough. I'm not sure, <laughs> but we can give it a try. Be careful now. There's a lot of witch blood on this, see? For no fire, this happens. <laughs> Let's slow the pace down a bit and get to know this charismatic and eccentric Bavarian it's German an by taking a look behind the scenes. <laughs> So, Jörg, to create catapult carnage, you uh, you have a special rubber room. Um, yeah, I do. In fact, I have the entire basement pretty much. So, <laughs> and look, it's a mess. My wife hates me for it. But <laughs> this is absolutely fantastic. Can we look at some of this stuff down here? Yeah, this is like the pile of weapons that I made over the course of the last four years. Yeah. And I always keep them. I never give them away. So. Uh, it's getting a problem with all the uh, space that I have here, so... <laughs> this rubber is as thick as... I mean... <laughs> this is, yeah, it's a lot of rubber on it, yeah. <laughs> right, and this is not the only room, there's more, isn't there? Yeah, that's just the bulky stuff, so... Uh, Let's have a look through here. So if we go through here... This is where I store some of the materials that I'm planning to use in the future and some stuff that needs a bit, a bit of repair. What does this do? So this, is a <laughs> this is a full auto slingshot, rubber powered, and it's shooting arrows. arrows. So little bolts that are made for, for pistol cross bolts. <laughs> and it shoots eight of them in about yeah, half a second. So. Fabulous, <laughs> right. Um, and uh, you do have some traditional uh, slingshots. Yeah, of course, yeah. Actually, most of the slingshots that I make are very traditional. And uh, I store some of them here. And I have, I have, you know, some, I have bags full of them. There's hundreds of them here. Yeah, yeah. I made a lot of them by myself. I have given away a lot of them, but I also have people that sent me slingshots. So, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a dream. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but the work that goes into this, it's amazing. And that's like a semi-finished one. But this here, for example, is a good example. That is a, 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 a natural fork that I carved into this shape. Yes. And um, this, uh, the wood has been sent to me from a guy from Texas. It's a Texas persimmon, which is a tree that doesn't grow here. But I think it, it looks like marble. It's, it's really exciting. Well, we said you'd be on the show this week, last week, and people have already said, that's, one guy said he's got some willow for you that he's been planning to send yeah, okay. you. So people send you wood from all over the world. Yeah, they do. And um, actually, sometimes I even trade. So people send me like three or four forks. But, and then I send them one slingshot back and, and keep the other wood for me. But, you know, people don't realize that I need really, really big forks. I mean, because I need the room for the carving. So uh, if people send me like a normal, small little fork. Oh. <laughs> it's the cat for the catapult. Yeah. <laughs> Right. My cats are uh, everywhere, so... Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, the thing is that I need really, really big bulky forks to carve them out of it. And often people send me just very thin wooden forks and those are pretty useless for me, so... Okay, well, let's go and try one of these out. Not on okay. the cat, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
First up, let's check out a few of those designs. There really is something for everyone, from the hardcore to the soft centres. This is, has the advantage that it completely protects your hand. <laughs> and I, I always use it for beginners that are afraid of the low forks. Yes. Since they are so afraid that it's a mind thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, laws of physics dictate that when you are, you know, do everything right, you can't hit your hand. Sure. Because it will always go through here, right, and not to here. So, but this is a psychological help, right. And you can hit the bunny afterwards if you want to. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. All right, let's try some of these out. As well as hundreds of different catapult designs, Jörg yeah. has come up with a few different styles of shooting your projectile of choice too. From the just William way to the gangster sideways action, also known as full butterfly. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way back to this. If you can, yeah. At the moment, all I care about is not breaking my thumb. <laughs> oh, that you see, this the ball slipped out of the pouch. See that? Yeah, that's why you didn't hit it. Thank you. So uh, this is the release technique that you have, <laughs> or you hit yourself. No, no, it's okay. fine. <laughs> so what do you? Oh, you hit your thumb. Okay. <laughs> that's only a glancing blow, uh, blow problem. But you know, the thing what you have to do is when you learn this, this, this when you do this, when you yep. do when you draw out, when you draw out, you have to keep your release technique right. Okay. Because, and it's different when you shoot to here, you know, you're, but when you're here, your fingers are in like in an awkward position. Yes. So what I usually do is I twist them around 90 degrees. Can, so, you, can you show me Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I put a ball in the pouch, like here, it would be very natural. Yes. But if you draw it in full, this becomes very unnatural. Okay. So what I do is I turn them around 90 degrees, which obviously doesn't do anything. So. You see, it's it, yes. So it's much. I think it's much more comfortable this yeah, way. Right? Jörg makes all of them look easy, which is probably why he has a chest girth in the 50s, while mine sits in the 30s. That's my excuse, wow. and I'm sticking with it. The forces generated by Jörg's slingshots are huge. That's all thanks to the wonder that is rubber. He is fascinated by its properties and tries to convince yeah. me that it's a gas. Yes, it is a gas. So. I can show it to you. So, if, if you take solid. if you take <laughs> if you take this piece of rubber yep. and you take your upper lip, because this is a very sensitive uh, part of uh, your body, heat sensitive, yep. and you put it against your upper lip, it's pretty cold because yep. it's cold outside. Now, if you stretch it out to the max, just a little piece, just a shorter piece, yep. just as short as possible, draw it out and immediately hold it against your lip. Oh, you're feeling it's warm. Yes. Now relax it again and feel it again. It's cold again. Oh. What? So this is, this is what happens. Rubber stores the energy thermally. So the rubber isn't like on a spring, it's, it's not a mechanical uh, energy storage, but it does this in heat. And it has to do with entropy. So uh, it behaves like a gas. You probably have seen this when you empty like a CO2 can, then it gets very cold. This is the same thing like releasing rubber. You're bringing it from a state of order like this, where all the, um, uh, the chains, the molecule chains will be aligned into a state of disorder. Knowing I am here to meet the king of the catapults, I've brought my dad's old Milbro catty with me. Many is the rabbit that has looked at me slightly quizzically after I've buzzed a pebble at it and missed. It's a wonder it's here today, as I left it in my hand luggage en route here. Happily, the lady in front with the toothpaste turned out to be a greater threat to airport security. Anyway, it needs a little blinging up, and I'm hoping Jörg will pimp it for me. Okay, well, I could do a, a few things. So, of course, I could attach very modern flat bands to it and make it shooting like really well and you know, would perform far better than it ever did. But I could also attach traditional bands for you if you want that. So, no, you want, want performance. I, I want modern, I want high tech, I want Jörg's Bravo. But, but you, you would usually shoot this like this, right? No, I don't, no? No, I don't want to do that anymore. You, how would you shoot it then? Like I, this? No, or like I, this? I actually, I, I usually shoot like this. Because this is kind of not very comfortable to hold this it's way, not, right? No. Okay, so I would have to put like a little weaker, but then you're saying you're only using small balls anyway, right? Well, I'm simply using gravel as a... Oh, gravel, okay. <laughs> okay, well, if you use gravel, then you need a larger pouch, right? right. 
And this one has ripped, obviously. Yes. So this is in, in need of a replacement anyway. Like a surgeon working on a delicate organ transplant, Jörg breathes life into the old girl. We'll put the whole of this process up as a separate film. Click on the screen to watch it. All I need now is a suitable stone. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jörg is a YouTube phenomenon. This man's incredible engineering brain continues to develop new ways of chucking stuff at high velocity into the air. And that's why he is so popular. I'm just glad I'm not his gardener. And if you want to see more of Jörg Sprava's work, you can visit his channel page by clicking on the link on the screen. Now it's David on the Field Sports Channel, News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. An academic from East Anglia wants us to shoot three quarters of a million of Britain's deer. The shooting organisations have been quick to round on Paul Dolman of the University of East Anglia, who made his suggestion in the Journal of Wildlife Management. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association said that such a massive slaughter would destroy the livelihoods of thousands of individuals who work in the deer stalking industry. The British Deer Society called the figure arbitrary and not justified. An American TV hunting host has been shot dead by a man who later shot himself. Gregory Rodriguez, the host of the Sportsman's Channel show A Rifleman's Journey, was shot and killed on Thursday night in Whitefish, Montana, whilst on a business trip. His murderer may have believed that Rodriguez was having an affair with his wife, which police say is untrue. Are you in the Buckinghamshire or Oxfordshire area at Easter? If so, the Tame Country Fair is on from the 31st of March to the 1st of April. This year it offers more stands, including an array of country sports arenas and attractions, including a falconry village. There's a craft village too, with blacksmiths and chainsaw carving. The food halls offer gourmet grub, beers, wine, spirits and cordials. It takes place at the Thames Showground. Adults are £11, OAPs £10, children £4 and the under fives go free. Visit livingheritagecountryshows.co.uk Big British foxes are back. Viewer Steve Bradshaw sent in this picture of his friend Richard Harrison with a fox shot in the Leeds area. It weighed £28 and was 41 inches long from top of its nose to tip of tail. So a long way off the record which is £12 heavier but it's still a worthy size for the animal. Shooters have given the Scottish Government one of their petitions to stop air gun licensing in Scotland. The change.org petition carried 13,000 names when delivered. It's still open. You can get it via firearmsuk.wordpress.com. And finally, a struggling deer stranded on thin ice has been rescued in Canada by a quick-thinking helicopter pilot. The doe and fawn were trapped on sea ice in Nova Scotia, with the mother slipping and sliding each time she tried to move. Pilot David Farrell blew the deer across the ice to safety using the wind created by his helicopter's rotor blades. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now let's dive into the show. Iwa in Nuremberg. For the first time this year, we were able to try out the guns at a secret military installation close to the city centre. It's the big one, Iwa. There are people in the gun trade who spend all year planning for it. It's where the world's shooting industry comes together. Not as flash as the SHOT Show, not as posh as the CLA Game Fair. It is Cape Canaveral for European gun scope and ammunition manufacturers. A launch platform for kit. Until this year, what Iwa has missed is a way to try out that kit. Happily, Swiss-German ammunition giant Ruag has its world headquarters in a suburb of Nuremberg. So we go out there to try out some stuff. Thanks to a kind invitation from Zeiss Sports Optics, Ruag and gunmaker Zara. Let's start with what Ruag has on offer and its ammunition is designed, well, not for bunny hugging exactly, but certainly for bunny huggers. So you are very proud of this block, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Why? This shows the performance of our new Evolution Green Bullet. Yes. Um, it's been shot at like 200 meters. 
That's the distance where most lead free bullets show very, very poor performance. They're not fragmenting, they're not doing what they're supposed to do anymore, they're not killing. You have to search the animals forever, and they're running very far. So this is a, not a gel block, this is a roe deer, is that right? I see a roe deer in that. Ruag hasn't given up on lead, not a bit of it. Its air gun pellets are still full of the stuff, but with some unusual additions. You've got a rattly uh, tin and a non rattly tin here. Yeah, I have here, we, we made on the on 10 metres, we made a test shooting, and it was that the power ball is getting through to both pins. Yep. The steel ball on it makes the deep penetration and the high impact in the target. We have to speak to our hosts from Carl Zeiss too. It launched its Victory HT range of scopes and binoculars last year, made of glass from one of its sister companies, Shot Glass, that is simply ahead of its time. With a scope you cannot miss. <laughs> this is our long range shooting scope, the 4 to 16 by 50 and it has a parallax adjustment as well as a target turret. It's um, sighted in on 500 meter, or to be very precise, 485 meter. And we are using a Sauer 202 together with a, with a new caliber. It's a 6XC. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very accurate, fast bullet. You can use for hunting, especially on predators, but it's also very good for target shooting. Back at the show itself in a giant echoey exhibition hall on the other side of Nuremberg and 2013 is the year of the rifle. Let's start with one of the big stars who is in charge of one of the big launches. Max, as far as we can see from the film, that is the ideal hunt in New Zealand, isn't it? It was, it was perfect. Was it really like that? Actually it was, because uh, as you can see as well, in the beginning we had good weather and the bad weather came in. We would have loved to have good weather in all the scenes, but actually that was how it was. And it was a hunt, an animal was hunted, uh, and you got to use the Zara 101. So what was that like? For, for me it was a great pleasure. When, when I grew up, my daddy, he, he, he was a, a big hunter as well, and I learned from him. And he had the old Sauer, so for me, getting asked by Sauer to bring their rifle out and test it in the field before it was released here at the EVA was a big thing for me and I was proud about it. Now did they really send out a helicopter all the way to New Zealand with the Zara helicopter? I, I put all the stickers on actually. <laughs> I brought the stickers. I had to go to an airport at home and, and, and get the measurement of the stickers. I got them made and I had to go there and put the stickers on. Actually it was quite difficult because it was freezing and couldn't put them on, they fell off again. So. We have a lot of nice footage of that as well. <laughs> Here's the Zara boss to go through the technical details. Uh, you're the boss of Zara, so I expect you to be nice about the Zara 101. What, what does it do that other rifles don't do? Well, the first thing was its safety, its ergonomics, its accuracy, and that you can experience everything. So, for example, what do you have? It's a direct firing pin safety. Well, and you know, actually, you can have levers that don't allow you to be very ergonomic, fast and silent. Now what you have here, it's just that lever, and this is all you do. You mount the gun, and you go that way. We have a direct lockup inside the barrel with six massive locks, so we talk passive safety. Detachable magazine, five rounds in standard, four rounds in magnum, and a padded and padding system, which simply means even if the gun is in, let's say, the highlands, a lot of rain, and a lot of stalking, a lot of creeping around and stuff, if it's getting really wet and the stock would bend a bit, it doesn't affect the gun at all. It'll group, it'll be dead on zero, so you can be successful even in the worst conditions. Before we leave the Sauer stand, Matthias shows us just how confident he is about the strength and design of this rifle by standing on the magazine. Don't care too much what material is. Make sure you get the best in the rifle that you can put in there, and this is what we did. Zara is always up for a laugh, and a feature of Iwa is its latest crazy idea for a souped-up gun. Last year they gave us the Gladiator, with real gladiators. This year it's a case of, that's not a gun, this is a gun. Daniel, you have travelled many thousands of miles, and you have got... 24 hours. <laughs> Have you got the rifle you wanted? Oh, I did get the rifle I wanted, it's exactly how we wanted it. The timber work is magnificent, so is the engraving. And Actually, I really like the 3D effect that goes through it, it's absolutely magnificent. What I, what I really do like though, is the uh, crocodile taking down the buffalo. <laughs> that is really good. That's really good. Dominic, is this really a usable rifle? Yeah, it is. It is a full hunting rifle. It's a calibre 375, it's a big game calibre, it's completely for hunting. It, completely. Are you going to use it? Yes. 
Really? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm going to use it on a buffalo, not on a croc, because it's illegal. It's illegal to shoot crocs. Can't yeah. shoot them. <laughs> Another rifle that's making a big splash is the latest version of the Blaza R8, the professional success, and it comes with another superb promotional film. Well, where all for that? Basically, it's a rifle that's, uh, as you've seen, used up in, in the mountains for, for hunting. Um, it's come from sporting scene. Um, Thumbhole stocks are not, not anything new as such, it's, uh, they've been around for a while, but they've not really been introduced into the hunting as such. Um, you have many features on the success stock in the fact that your thumb comes around completely into the, into the grip. Your thumb is inside the stock, which allows my finger to be completely around the trigger unit. That means I alleviate problems of flinching, which is quite often a problem when uh, shooting under pressure in the mountains, as you see in that video, and that was actually a, uh, an injured stag. Uh, the guy didn't have much time to uh, take that shot. It was over a long distance. And having a success stock like this, it just alleviates a lot of those faults that could happen. So Zawa uses a celebrity and a great location for its film. Blaza uses a great location. And Belgian gun giant Browning's Rimfire offer comes with endorsement from a London 2012 Olympic shooting medalist. And it's not Pete Wilson. We have uh, Lionel Cox who, uh, who shoot a rifle at the latest Olympic. He won the silver, uh, silver medal. Uh, and he's now our ambassador for the, for the brand, for the Browning uh, products, uh, using and shooting our products, especially the T-Bolt. So he's uh, basically shooting the T-Bolt with all the different uh, cartridges, whether it's uh, standard velocity, subsonic and so on, and uh, giving his uh, credit and uh, ability and capacity about Browning uh, accuracy, precision and, uh, and performance. Iwa is not just for the big guys. The little companies get a look in too. Here's a Field Sports Channel viewer, Eric van der Horst, who has come up with an idea for a high seat and wants to see what the gun trade thinks. I found in the market many, many portable and collapsible high seats, but they're very big. I wanted to make something for people with a smaller car. Um, it's not for the small budget, unfortunately, so we're trying to make it cheaper. But the main thing is that we want something that is easy to carry. This one is quite small, you can put it on your back and you can shoot from a higher level, which also makes it more uh, safe. Now, can you buy it in the shops yet? No, it's completely new. Actually, this, <laughs> this is two weeks old. No. So this is what's annoying about Ewa. You see all this wonderful kit, but nobody can actually go and buy it yet. But you hope by the end of Ewa... Well, let me put it this way. I promise, if Fieldsforce people are interested, I'll make sure they can buy it. Ewa is also known for the quirky. British company Webley & Scott is celebrating its nearly 200-year gun-making heritage with a newly built cannon. It's a scaled-down version of a British 12-pound field gun. It's been specially commissioned but are available for sale for anyone that wants one uh, with the shotgun license. But each one is individually made. The wheels in particular are made by the Queen's Wheelwright and every gun is proofed in Birmingham. And Webley's distributor, Highland Outdoors, also has something a little more modern. It's a bit of a romp, this gun show thing, but most of the kit is there for us to try and for you to buy as long as it captures your imagination. Some of it, however, just for us to try. From Germany to the world, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. It's Isle of Man style rabbit shooting first this week with Manx Air Gunner. In Rabbit Hunt Hash 1, he shoots four at varying ranges and an instructional amount of holdover using a Hatsan 80 44 10 inch 22 and sub 12 foot pounds. After all the bad weather we've had recently, I just had to book today off work, he writes. This permission is overrun with rabbits and it's my duty to remove as many as possible. Moving up the air gun power scale, 
Gale's High Power Day State Mark IV Rabbit Hunting with Jerry Moss is the latest from Country Pursuits TV. Jerry and his mate Chris are called to a Cumbrian caravan site where rabbit damage is becoming an issue both for caravanners and walkers. Air gun here is a Tom Forrest Custom Mark IV, again in 2-2, but this time tightened up to 30 foot pounds. Now, for a superbly stylish way to catch rabbits, attach a camera to your red tail hawk. That's what Robert Giroux does in Squirrel and Rabbit Hawking in the USA. Too dramatic music, but the footage is dramatic too. Moving to angling and Mark Erdwin is gaining a following, partly thanks to collaborations with the stars fishing on the Blackwater. With Carl and Alex shows a recent trip where Mark has the pleasure of having both Carl and Alex Smith come and fish with him in Hampshire. The fish are not in the most forthcoming of moods, but today is enjoyable, souls like-minded. Next, fishing with a sense of humour. The recent cold weather in the UK inspired me to look for and find the perfect film to warm me up. Any day Canadian ice fishing in northern Ontario, Canada from 2009 shows those crazy Canucks out looking for fish sub-Arctic style. If anyone deserves to get watched on YouTube, these guys do. Back in the world of shooting and this film comes to me as a suggestion from Belgian website hunting.be. It's a cautionary tale whose moral is either to remember to check your zero or teach your children to tell the truth or both or if you're a rabbit don't go near a white-tailed buck during the hunting season. John Gonzalez's son dropped his rifle a week before this hunt and did not mention it was dropped. That resulted in this dramatic miss before John went to get the other rifle from his truck. Viewer Quentin Stewart reckons this video is good enough to put into hunting YouTube and I think he's right. Shotgun cartridges explained shows a selection of harder to get shotgun cartridges and the differences between them. Quentin says the film helped him understand more about shotgun cartridges. Finally, for another life skill nobody should be without, let's go to Australia where viewer Jeff Roberts recommends this film called Catching a Fox Barehanded. The fox was apparently released safely and unharmed. The same bloke also catches rabbits with snakes. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Another great show to watch is this week's Schools Challenge TV. Breeden School in Gloucestershire has a clay pigeon shooting team and its own clay layout. Does that make it the perfect country school? That's not all. We have Schools Challenge TV news. Then, doyens of the shooting world Ian Coley and Doug Florence get together to talk about what makes shooting great. Well, we are back next week and I have exactly until the end of this Nuremberg-ian escalator to tell you what I normally say at the end of the programme. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or best of all, scroll down to the bottom on the right, you'll see a little box, the constant contact form, where you're able to pop your email address in. We'll contact you every week about our programme that's out 7pm every Wednesday UK time. This has been Field Sports Britain!